consciousness and completely different from the manifestations and the transformations of prakriti sankhat parathatvat sankhat parathatvat sankhat Trigunadi viparyayad adhishthanad Trigunadi viparyayad adhishthanad Trigunadi viparyayad adhishthanad Purusho asti bhoktra bhavad Purusho asti bhoktra bhavad Purusho asti bhoktra bhavad Kaivalyartham pravrattesca Kaivalyartham pravrattesca Kaivalyartham pravrattesca Purusho asti bhoktra bhavat Purusha exist The reasons for the existence of the portion. Now what are the reasons that we have to admit and accept that Purusha exists, consciousness exists. So first reason is Sanghata Parathatva. So, Sanghata means a combination of many things. Composite product is called Sanghata. So, Sri Krishna is using the composite products 
as a reason, as a cause or it is a direct indication to non-composite existence. Now it is very interesting how it can be. He says, Sanghata Parathatva. So para or paratha means it, uh, its being for another. Paratha. The comp composite object or products or whatever made with uh, many parts is working for something else. For example, so this uh, structure, this all we have, this is made out of many objects. Or is it, you can say it is a composite product. It has many parts. And this uh, house, this building is not meant for itself. It meant for something else, something uh, other than that itself. So it meant for the it meant for us. You know, we are separate from this. Similarly, when we see our body, this is also made out of many parts, the composite product. Sankhata. So we call it as a Sankhata, Sharira Sankhata. It's a body composition made of many things. So it means this body is also not meant for the body itself. Very simple reason. So wherever you apply, you will find that all these products which are made of made out of many parts or with many causes is not meant for the, cause, the product itself. In other words, we can say no products is meant for itself. That if you see vehicle or whatever. The vehicle is not meant for vehicle. The vehicle is used by somebody else, the owner of the vehicle or who wants to use it. Similarly, if you see, take uh, cloth. This cloth is not meant for cloth. So you think on based on this, and you will find. All the objects in the creation is made of parts, atoms and then you know, molecules or particles or whatever way we think, they are all made of some parts. There are two, uh, no, more than one object. So that is called a Sankhata. Now we will make a logic out of this. So what is that logic is, which are made of many parts is meant for another. So for the sake of another, for the use of another. This is a, uh, we can say it's a, it's a logic. And this is, we cannot deny it because everywhere we find the same. Now Sanghara Parathatva. If that is the case, when we see the body, mind, intellect, sense organs, and all what we see in this compound of uh, phys physical body must not be meant for itself. So now, what is other than this? 
the something is there. This book is not enjoying itself because in book, when we read the book, the enjoyer is different from the book. Book is enjoyed. It is an object of enjoyment. But nobody can say that book itself enjoys whatever written in that. So the reader enjoys the book. Similarly, the enjoyment, whatever uh, takes place in the body, is not for the enjoyment of the body. So that enjoyment is experienced by something else which is connected to the body but other than body. It is not body body uh, combination. It is beyond this Sankhata. The Sankhata Parathatva. And based on this, not only in Sankhya school, but also in uh, Yoga school, in Vedanta, or uh, in uh, Nyaya Shastra and all other schools, they take this uh, no, as a uh, to, uh, to prove it, as a proof for consciousness or beyond that. So here there is one uh, very important sutra in Sankhya Darshana, the Sankhya Sutra, Chidavasano Bhokaha, Chidavasano Bhokaha. The enjoyment is based on consciousness or we can say enjoyment lasts for consciousness. So Chidavasano Bhoga, where the enjoyment ends, it ends in Chitra. Chaitanya, consciousness. It means the enjoyer is consciousness. Now where we can find this enjoyer? How we can find the enjoyer? Only with, only with this uh, logic and uh, thinking and contemplating we can find. Because it cannot be seen. The consciousness, the enjoyer is always a seer, not a seen. It cannot be an object of uh, en uh, enjoyment. So therefore, Sankhādasya Parākthattva. Parākthattva. Now, Trikunādi Vibharyaya. Actually, this uh, Sanghādasya Parārthattva is the first reason. It, uh, it is, being, uh, it is uh, being elaborated in that uh, sense to know more about it. Now, what, this, what the Sanghāda is? You see, the Prakriti itself is a Sanghāda. Prakriti has three gunas. It's a combination of three gunas. Sattva Rajasthama. So, Trigunadi Viparyayat. So, then the enjoyer, the seer, must be opposite of these three gunas. Why? Because these three gunas, they themselves is Sankhara. They are not alone. In the last karikas we have seen they are always together, joined together. Therefore, they are also sankhata. The trigunadi viparyaya. But it can be experienced or its existence can be experienced 
through these trigunas. The trigunas can be indication for the experience. Why? With the same uh, logic that the enjoyment is happening and the enjoyment is not for the sake of enjoyment. You may think all this what we are talking is only uh, with these words, we are playing with the words. Uh, when uh, somebody uh, just learned this as a new test or a new philosophy, uh, we talk very simple but all with, the, with the, these words. So there is no other way to say. It. Now, as we said, the enjoyer is different from the object this is this can be understood very easily like the object is book and we are seeing it object and also we are different the seer and seen is always separate subject and object we learn in our normal you know, learning that subject and object is different but then come the next point the next point here is, object is always an object. The object cannot be subject. It means the object which has the characteristics of objectification cannot be changed into subject. And similarly, the subject which is the enjoyer, which is the knower, which is the seer, subject. The subject cannot be ever made object into object. So this uh, this when we see the normal normal understanding, here it is not like that. Like the object is book, now subject is the seer. But this subject, the seer, can be made an object for another seer. So I am seeing it and you are seeing me. So there is another seer. So this seer is made as seen to, uh, in, in, in comparison with another seer. And similarly, the another seer, the third seer can be seen by the fourth seer. And fourth seer, seer can be seen by the fifth seer. It goes like that. But actually, it is not true. Why? Because here the seer, what you think as a seer, the, the one with the eyesight and the one with the mind, awakened uh, the mind, and all those, whatever we see as a seer. So I have seen it. These whatever elements are connected to see are also seen. It is not seen. The seer is still different from that. It means the eyesight or eye, eyes are not see, uh, we cannot say the eyes are seer. So eyes is seen through something or for something. As Sanghara se Because the eyes itself is a Sanghara. It's a combination. Eyes is not seen for the sake of eyes itself. The mind is not thinking for itself. It is thinking for the sake of the enjoyer the thinker who is thinking you got it so it is very useful for meditation it is very it is a first technique used to identify sakti as a seer who who is sitting inside so who are we because if you apply this for Vedantic meditation, you will understand you are beyond this. 
the body mind combination is only an instrument working for and as we said here this instrument is not the actual seer the real seer is something beyond real seer is using this instrument to see as we use camera and uh, uh, binoculars and all the other object to see other other objects so the instrument cannot be made or we cannot call the instrument as a seer the camera is not a seer camera is also a, an instrument for the seer so this is uh, an important point as an observer as a seer the consciousness is identified how we identify that beyond of this body mind combination so therefore what we think as an uh, as a seer like mind and intellect and all other not the seer they are not the seer the seer is still different from that now then how we know it how we know this seer so in this uh, logic we cannot know the seer because if you know the seer then the seer becomes seen and what we say seer is ever seer and seer never be seen therefore it's very simple we cannot say seer is seen seer cannot be made seen appearingly seer is seen but actually seer is not seen so how it appears with the instruments this is the first meditation of sankhya yoga vedanta and we can say this is the last meditation of sankhya yoga and vedanta was it is all the meditation techniques are based on this the seer drashta and drish drasht darsyo varaktam chittam no in yoga sutra also it comes so drashya an object drashta the observer the seer so drishya and drashta when we separate this we start from this and ends with prakriti and purusha there comes discriminative knowledge viveka chat the final discriminative knowledge ultra discriminative knowledge so there also is separate like how we separate two atoms two particles that is very very subtle similarly uh, by the characteristics or by the experience through this meditation we separate prakriti and purusha we start from this drishya and drashta and it goes up to the prakriti and purusha so there ends the sadhana so when prakriti and purusha is separated by this logic then the the purusha the consciousness the seer is experienced is not seen but we say is experience now if we use this word that is why i said we are playing with this word we have no other way so now i say the purusha the consciousness is experienced now if it is experienced then there is experience <laughs> if you are experiencing something then only you can say that is experience 
If I am knowing something, then only I can say the object is not. If this consciousness is also experienced, so then the consciousness becomes the object of that particular experience. Because you say consciousness is experienced. When in samadhi or in ultra discriminative state of knowledge, it is experience. No, some, somewhere we have to say it is experience, it is not. When we say that, the all logic word we use is denied. It means the just opposite of that. We are saying it cannot be, the subject cannot be made an object, an object and seer cannot be made seen. Then you say the seer is experienced. So that is contradictory. Therefore, they are very careful. They say, you cannot say the consciousness is experienced. If you are having an experience, then that experience is based on intellect only. It means you are standing in the side of intellect or with intellect and saying you are having the experience. So actually we have some experience. We cannot deny that we are having some experience like uh, uh, we are seeing objects outside and experiencing, uh, we are enjoying objects and sometimes we are suffering and all those experiences are there. So there the Sanjaya and Yoga both say, if you have any experience, it means you are standing with, again you are standing with prakriti or intellect. So that intellect with which you are experiencing the real experience at that stage of experience, it's also buddhi and that buddhi is very special. That buddhi is called sattva, shuddha sattika, shuddha sattva. It is named as Shuddha Sattva, the purest intellect. Shuddha Sattva. In Yoga Sutra, it is said, Ridambara Tatra Pratnya. The Ridambara Pratnya. Uh, it means uh, the intellect developed into that stage where, other than this seer, nothing is experienced. That's all. And now, according to Vedanta, in this state, because in this state, uh, regarding this experience and experience and uh, seer and seen, and you cannot deny the experience and all that. <coughs> Sanya said, whatever you experience now, even this, in this stage of this uh, Shuddha uh, intellect, Shuddha Sattva, you don't consider that experience is the experience of reality or experience of consciousness. You don't consider it because again there is Buddhi. So you don't make a statement or you don't decide that whatever I experience is consciousness. So the Sankhya says in that state, even there, that state, you are experiencing reflected consciousness. Hmm? Say that you will even in that state, what you are experiencing is reflected consciousness. Because the original consciousness cannot be experienced. They are standing with that. Now, in this stage, even though the original consciousness, the character of the consciousness is not experienced, or it is reflected consciousness which is experienced, but we say Kaivalya. Even this stage is liberation, emancipation, this is the 
aloneness because aloneness is experienced through sattva shuddha sattva to make this shuddha sattva we practice all these meditations samprajnada samprajnada and uh, we start from yoga practice and pranayama and then we do all the sadhanas to make this intellect so pure that it will only reflect the consciousness nothing else so no other object is reflected in shuddha sattva then that stage is discriminative state the last discrimination final discrimination so you leave in that then that person is called liberated that sadhaka is liberated so it is jivan mukti there so trigunadi viparyayat so trigunadi viparyayat and then comes adishthana viparya means opposite so the uh, constituted object or are with the gunas and this uh, consciousness is unconstituted therefore it should be separate of this gunas okay so then we have what we have just now discussed adishthanat adishthana it means controller the last uh, point where we reach when we start meditation we start with the seen and seer drashta and drishya we compare this what is drishya and what is drashta in that meditation we can uh, separate or we can separately see the body mind intellect ego and all the functions of body mind and intellect we can separately see because they are they become object of us so then you are then your sadhana starts you see you are unable to see these uh, objects as a seen and a, as a object then you are with that object If you identify your body and saying I am this body, then you have to think about that. How do you are you are you are this body and all those. <coughs> there, you know, yoga sutra. There is one sutra based on this. I said, no meditation based on this in Sankhya Yoga and uh, Veda. Vedanta there they use uh, some other words like aham mama uh, my and uh, aham I, i and my and the object and subject all this we use drashta drishya viveka there and there in yoga sutra there is one sutra parartatva parartatva swartha samyama purusha jnana you see parartatva swartha samyama purushatya yoga sutra 335 so how we recognize the purusha how we identify the purusha how we can see the witness so then say parartatva the same logic is sankhada se parartat because all the enjoyments happens for something else तो परार्थत्व दैट इज एंड स्वार्थ संयमा स्वार्थ संयमा मींस स्वार्थ मींस दिस स्वा इज पुरुष बिकॉज़ आई एम रीडिंग द बुक फॉर माय सेल्फ आई नो क्लियरली आई एम रीडिंग द बुक नॉट फॉर द सेक ऑफ बुक नॉट फॉर द सेक ऑफ आई सेट नॉट नॉट फॉर द सेक ऑफ माइंड नॉट फॉर द सेक ऑफ इंटेलेक्ट नॉट फॉर द सेक ऑफ माय फ्रेंड्स not for the sake of my uh, no family parents or for whom you are reading i am reading for myself you see it's very simple no if you are reading for yourself now who are you 
So you are beyond all this. So that uh, one experience itself shows that you are not the experience, you are the experiencer and this experience, experiencer is separate from the experienced object and the relation with all the objects or the connections of the objects. Therefore, Parārthattva Swārtha Samyamāt Purusha Jñānam Because in third chapter of Yoga Sutra, Vibhūti Yoga, there are so many types of meditations. Out of the one, this is Purusha Jñāna. The same method is used. Similarly, in fourth chapter also there is one sutra, the last part. Tada Sangheya Vāsana Vichitramati Parārtham Samhatya Gārittva Same reason is used. Tada Sangheya Vāsana Bhi The fourth Pāda, 24th Sutra Asangheya Vāsana Bhi Chittram Abhi So that Chittam, they are talking about the Chittam, mind combination. The Chittam is, uh, Chittam has so many innumerable uncounted vasanas. There are so many vasanas. And with those, with all those vasanas, Chittam makes so many actions. So the, all the actions are experienced. Tada Sangheya Vasana Bhihi Chittram Abhi Even though this Chittam is very uh, no, there are so many objects and it's very beautiful and it's uh, making so many experience. But Paratham, it is not for us. Chittam is not working for us. Chittam works for something else. Samhatya Gaitva, for the reason, the same reason. Samhatya means Sanghada. Because the Chittam is also Samhatya Kari. Chittam has many characteristics. Chittam is many fault. Therefore, Chittam is not working for itself. So normally in our experience, the Chittam is everything. As in psychology, the subconscious mind is everything. The conscious mind works and subconscious mind knows. And subconscious mind is the personality and you change the subconscious mind, your personality changes and all those things. Because they think subconscious mind is as self, as Atma. So here that subconscious mind is Chitta. Conscious mind is working for subconscious mind or the subconscious mind uses conscious mind as uh, an instrument. That is what we experience, the first mind and second mind. But that is not true. Even this subconscious mind, even in the absence of subconscious mind, you are there. And the absence of subconscious mind is not experienced with any other mind. Like in the deep sleep, you are not experiencing anything there. You don't know conscious mind, what is conscious mind, what is subconscious mind. <coughs> You don't remember about you. Who are you? You don't know. So then, what is that? Can we say, or we are not there? We cannot say. Within deep sleep also we are there. But subconscious mind and unconscious mind, not, no mind is working there. Then who are you? So your original nature should be beyond all this. You know, sankatya haritva. So you don't believe or you don't, uh, you don't take the, this chittam as granted. Chittam is also an instrument. And it carries so many things from childhood, whatever we did, all the experiences, all the habits and the vasanas and it carries. That's okay. But you are not Chitramapi Parartham Samhatya Gaitva. So, this way we have uh, uh, so many reasons to say 
that uh, chittam and uh, the chit, the chittam is mind and chit is consciousness, it's two different entities. So tadadishthanat purusho asti bhoktra bhava. So this reason we already have uh, learned that bhoktra bhava, the bhokta means experiencer. So, since there must be an experience of experiencer of pressure and pain. The pressure and pain because we take uh, whatever the mind brings in two categories. Either pressure or pain. So, therefore, all experiences, all uh, experiences with the mind, we call uh, the two types pressure and pain. It is connected to pressure sometimes and it is connected to pain. Now, this is Bhokta Bhava. Now, pressure and pain is there in the mind. Pressure and pain is there in the mind because when mind is active, then we experience pressure and pain. Therefore, we have to say that uh, mind has this pressure and pain. Then also we can ask this question. Is mind is experiencing pressure for itself? Or mind is experiencing pain for itself? No. It is not. The mind is also controlled by something else. The experiencer is there, that is okay. But mind is also controlled by something else. If we can decide our own pressure and pain, then we will only choose pressure, not pain. Why we choose pain? Why we want to suffer? Nobody wants to suffer. Not this physical body wants to suffer, not the mind wants to suffer, not the intellect wants to suffer, not the uh, ego. Egoism wants to suffer. So all these elements, which we call uh, you know, the instruments, or we, sometimes we are misunderstood that ourself with ourselves. So these elements do not want to suffer. So now then, why this suffering is? How it comes? It means this. Although these instruments are bringing the pressure and suffer, but they are controlled by something else. That is karma. Now this chitta is controlled by karma. Why? Because as said in the Yoga Sutra 424, Tada Sanghe Vasana Vichitramabhi because it has so many vasanas, so many habits which we experienced in this birth and which we could not see or it is brought down from another birth or another uh, realms. And those are controlling. Therefore, when one vasana with pressure appears, you experience the pressure and another vasana with suffering or another object for suffering appears in the chittam, we suffer. So the chittam cannot avoid that. So you have to find some other way to avoid all this, to control this. So therefore we do practice all this. Uh, positive thinking and uh, no, all the sadhanas what we practice this for this to change the this uh, samskaras this uh, vasanas. So bhoktar bhava. Therefore, chitta is also not bhokta. No. Chitta itself is not bhokta. And at last, it says kaimari artham pravrtteshcha. Now all these elements. Body, mind, chittam, and all these, 
are working to end with kaivalya kaivalyartham pravrtesh now what is this kaivalya the word meaning is the ultimate aloneness kaivalya kevalasya bhavah kaivalyam kevala means alone the sinker that is called kevala so the aloneness is uh, experienced or attained after this experience so in that aloneness there is no experience no experience or no object of experience see alone no it means there cannot be one or two three four only one and one cannot be experienced itself therefore there is no experience of experience if, if there is an experience we need two at least two like uh, if i am knowing something there should be an object of known object and the knower and then in between the knowing will happen but knower himself does not know so there is no knowing in knower itself no like fire burns the objects outside the object other than fire can we say the fire burns itself no fire cannot burn itself like the bulb is giving light so bulb the light of the bulb we are seeing it and light uh, the light of the bulb is illuminating the object other than the light itself so light itself is not illuminated is it right why because when we say light it is itself is illumination why we why we should say the light itself is illuminating there is no need you understood no so now if you say this sentence even in english this sentence is incorrect because light itself illuminates lights what does it mean you cannot grasp an idea the thought process will be not there so light itself illuminates lights means only light is there that is what we want to say only light therefore there is no need to say the knower knows himself or the knower knows itself because when we say consciousness we use neutral gender no feminine gender no uh, uh, masculine only neutral gender it means consciousness itself is consciousness so we don't say consciousness knows itself there is no need to say that the knower knows itself there is no need to say so therefore that stage where this knowing and non uh, process is completed or uh, separated there we say kaivalyam therefore this kaivalyam the aloneness the ultimate aloneness ultimate isolation is the after effect of discriminative knowledge viveka jnana stop the so there is no activity in that sense and if if we say some activity there as i said before the activity will be there in the intellect not in the knowing the intellect has like we are trying to see the uh, bulb light so we see the light but light is not seeing itself 
this this way we have to understand so the the kaivalyartham pravrittescha the activity or the practices of sadhana we do for kaivalya to achieve this uh, final aloneness this this uh, in sankhya darshana although this kaivalya word is used uh, as a synonymous for moksha liberation when we say, we use the word moksha we can say liberation that is correct because the word gives that meaning liberator liberation but the word kaivalya does not give that meaning it is liberation because there is no liberation for consciousness consciousness is ever liberated you misunderstood consciousness as uh, body and mind and all those then the bondage came therefore we say there kaivalyam is liberation but actually there is no liberation for kaivalyam there is there is no need for liberation so it is ever liberated it is a stage of liberation it is a nature of consciousness why because consciousness cannot be attached to anyone anything asanko hyam purushah the detachment is a characteristic so a nature of consciousness like the space space cannot be attached or connected to anything everything happens in the space but space cannot be connected uh, attached because it has no quality of connecting the similarly the consciousness has no quality of attaching or you cannot uh, say that consciousness is in bondage it cannot be bounded so it is liberated ever that is kaivalya the difference between uh, sankhya's uh, understanding and uh, our vedanta's understand so vedanta also uh, say this asangohyaya purusha vedanta sankhya both say but uh, when we believe that there is uh, there is a bondage in samsara so then we, therefore we say there is a liberation emancipation and liberation like that so this way the first identification of purusha ke now based on purusha purusha adishtitam pradhanam parvartate is a statement now in the presence or in the beingness of this consciousness purusha all activities takes place like in the presence of sunlight the creation starts all activities happens but the sunlight is untouched with all these activities or sunlight is not inspiring from its side the activities and the effect of the activities the result of the activities do not connect or doesn't connect with the sunlight so because activities are not connected to sunlight In the presence of sunlight it happens now this is a, a, it is a, a special idea that you have to understand the presence inactive presence we know this from our science when sunlight is there the activities happens we cannot say sunlight is acting only sun is there when light is there and the activity takes place similarly in the presence of consciousness because the presence of consciousness is there everywhere it is all pervading therefore it is always there all pervading presence of consciousness all the activities of prakriti happens 
that is called purusha adhishthita prathanam prakriti pravartate so in uh, when we contemplate on ourselves the same answer can be seen in the presence of consciousness ego intellect mind sense organs and the physical body and connection with the objects and everything happens all the activities in the presence if you are not there nothing will happen it means if you are there you are i am then i have all this the first uh, presence is there the consciousness so it means i am so i am so my mind works i am so my, my body works i am so i have pressure so it goes like that so this way uh, this important point of identification as purusha is described here in 17th karika then the 18th and 19th karika will uh, take uh, the philosophical terms of this purusha Om Purnamadha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Avashishyate Om Shanti 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 Shanti